Ahead of its September 25th premiere, Netflix has released the official trailer for its Mr. McMahon docuseries. Interviews with Vince McMahon himself, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Hulk Hogan, Steve Austin, John Cena, Paul Triple H Levesque are included in the trailer. The trailer opens with Vince McMahon saying, People have wondered who I really am. You know, portrayal of me, I'm a bad guy. But no one really knows me. WWE's rise, the 1994 steroid trial, Chris Benoit's double murder-suicide, and Janelle Grant's sexual abuse allegations against Vince McMahon are among the topics that will be covered. Janelle Grant was not interviewed for the series, though producers did reach out to her. The docu-series is produced by sports media personality Bill Simmons and Tiger King executive producer Chris Smith. It features six one-hour episodes that will all be available to watch on September 25th, when the series debuts. Netflix has been developing this docu-series since 2020 with the project evolving along the way given the allegations made against McMahon. He resigned from WWE this January after Janelle Grant's lawsuit was filed. The interviews with McMahon were conducted prior to his resignation. The premiere of the documentary comes out just a few months before WWE Raw moves to Netflix in January 2025. WWE does not have a production credit on the Mr. McMahon series. At the Bash in Berlin press conference, Cody Rhodes was asked about the Vince McMahon documentary coming out on Netflix, and this is what he had to say. Hi, Cody Tilo from Hello. Tilo uh, from Young and Eve. Since you mentioned Netflix, I don't, I don't know if you saw the announcement of the Netflix doc on Vince. Um, are you gonna watch it? And um, are you ex are you um, familiar with the Janelle Grant story? Do you personally believe? what she's saying and does the locker room believe it because there's the locker room has been awfully silent on this whole issue you know the allegations about sex trafficking and rape yeah i uh i think uh, it's a it's a great question in terms of am i going to watch it uh not to sound cheeky by any means i am deep in a game of thrones rewatch and that is a, a hell of a lot of commitment um i don't know um, I think there's a bit of misinformation in terms of WWE has no involvement in this documentary as far as I know. I imagine I would get around to seeing it. In terms of the more serious and the, the meat in your question, in terms of the locker room being uh, quiet or silent, whatever it may be, I don't think that's a matter of belief versus non-belief. I think it's strictly speaking, we we want to be doing what we were doing out there and the focus and attention that it takes, you know, 13,149 people to have a great story and have a great match and do that every single night has left most of us where we're finding the information out just as you are. And that includes the resolution of this information in terms of what happened, how it happened, um, and, and, and how justice comes about, whatever it may be. Uh, but I wouldn't look at it as an active attempt from the locker room to be silent in the attempt. We just are, are doing what we do day-to-day -day WWE business. Switching gears, during his Thursday media call to promote Saturday's All Out, AEW head Tony Khan confirmed MJF's recent statement that his company is on the precipice of becoming the second most profitable company in wrestling history if they can secure a TV deal. Tony Khan was asked about a recent MJF interview in which the former AEW world champion mentioned that if AEW gets their new deal, they will be the second most successful wrestling company that has ever existed. I think it is reasonable. I, I now as to whether those cash flows uh, happen overnight when uh, the new deal kicks in, uh, I can't say those things for sure yet. And there's still a lot to be figured out. But I do think uh, the die is cast that AEW is going to be the second most profitable wrestling company at this point of all time, which is very impressive for a promotion that is just over five years old and has been on television for less than five years. And uh, it's amazing how quickly we've expanded and the expansion of the, the television product going from two hours a week to, to five hours a week and uh, being very excited about what the future holds in our media deal. It's, it's a really great time for the company. So I think Max was right on with what he was saying. Now, as to uh, getting into some of the semantics of it and the mechanics of the accounting and, and how we're counting all the dollars and 
I'm not sure exactly how many, how much money WCW made in 1998, nor am I honestly sure how much money Jim Crockett was making, you know, 1986. But I think uh, over the duration of this deal, I expect over uh, this multi-year period that we're about to enter into that we will be the second most profitable wrestling company in the history of the wrestling business. And it's going to be a really exciting thing, but it's also uh, only the beginning. It's the beginning of a really long journey. Like I said, you know, to be not even five years on television, it's, this is not the first step. It's not the second step. It's, it's been a long journey, but it's still early in a long journey. So, you know, uh, uh, for the golfers out there, I still feel like, you know, we, we played some holes, but I still think we're on the front nine here and uh, really building for the future. So I'm very excited about it. Uh, and then to go back to my football metaphors, you know, the deal is very much in the red zone. And I've, told, I've said it's, it's right there to be pushed in, uh, you know, and uh, that's where uh, we're going to uh, put the ball in the end zone. And it's going to be a huge touchdown for AEW. And I agree with what Max said. I think, it, you know, he made some great points. And whether or not people agree with MJF and the way he carries himself around the wrestling ring. He's a very intelligent person about the wrestling business. And speaking of AEW All Out, here is the main card as follows. The AEW World Champion Brian Danielson has his first title defense against Jack Perry. Swerve Strickland versus Hangman Page Part 4 will be taking place in a steel cage match. Willow Nightingale versus Chris Statlander in a Chicago street fight. Will Ospreay will defend his AEW International Championship against Pac. The AEW Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks, defend against Blackpool Combat Club, Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta. The TBS Champion, Mercedes Monet, defends against Hikaru Shida, with Camille banned from ringside. The AEW Continental Champion, Kazuchika Okada, will defend in a four-way. And MJF versus Daniel Garcia. And speaking of this match, I recently had the opportunity to chat with Daniel Garcia about his upcoming bout with MJF. Here's what he had to say about this feud. I mean, emotions are high. I feel like every big match I have, I feel like I have to end up saying this is the biggest match of my life. Because I feel like every match that I have over the past couple of years has been the biggest match of my life every single time. Every match for me feels like it's do or die. Every match feels like it could be the last match that I ever had. You know what I'm saying? Like he, he almost ended my career. He dropped me on my head. I was at home for seven weeks. I didn't know if I was going to be able to wrestle again. And uh, so I have the mentality going to every match now, like, dang, this could be my last one. So I better make it count. We also spoke about last night's comments that he made towards MJF on AEW Dynamite. Here's what Daniel had to say about that. I mean, when you're sitting at home for seven weeks doing nothing, you have a lot of time to sit in your notes app on your phone and write down thing, observations about people. And you know, Max is just such an easy person to observe and to make observations about. He's somebody who you can see all of the insecurity in him. Like he's not very good at hiding it. And I feel like it's just been waiting to get called out. And I'm surprised that nobody has called this stuff out with him yet. Like it's really shocking to me. So I've had all this time and I just knew that whenever I got my opportunity to say what I want to say about him, I knew I was going to go crazy. When it's your turn, go crazy. And I knew I was going to go crazy on him. And uh, you know, a lot of the material, it's, it's not its not new material. It's stuff that, you know, if you look through his Twitter comments or Instagram comments, it's, you know, pretty easy to observe stuff. So I, I'm glad I was just able to say what I think was on everybody else's mind. And I think that's why people like it so much because it's stuff that they're all thinking. It's just nobody else was brave enough to say it before me. And last but not least, Daniel Garcia spoke about his rise in AEW. For you, just seeing where you were at, day one in AEW to where you are now, how would you describe your growth in the company? I feel like I was brought in for a very specific position. And I feel like that position was to, you know, just be a guy who attacks the big names and then the big names beat. And I feel like when you're seen one way, it can be kind of hard to work your way out of that. So I feel like coming from that to now being somebody who is competing with these top guys and not just being somebody who it's oh daniel garcia is wrestling john moxley we know what's gonna happen i feel like now it's oh daniel garcia is wrestling mjf he might beat mjf 
And I feel like to get to that point, it took a lot of hard work. I feel like it took a lot of, you know, faith in myself and a lot of faith in AEW in me as well. And I feel like I've never given them a reason to not have that faith in me. I feel like every opportunity they've given me, I've done my best to knock it out of the park. And I feel like more times than not, I did my best to knock it out of the park and I knocked that bitch out of the park too. You know what I'm saying? So, so like, uh, I feel I, that, that's just how I feel. I feel like I deserve to be in these positions and I feel like I'm ready for them. And I feel like I prove that I'm ready for them every time I'm in them and I never let anybody down except for myself when I lose these big matches. It's not going to happen this time, though. That's a wrap for this episode of The Latest. As always, thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.